Hi, my name is Terry Doherty. I am the designer of the Glorian Empire series by Lock and Load Publishing. In this video, we'll go over Fire Combat. Fire Combat is pretty simple. It's the same for all three rule sets. There's some additional chrome with artillery and the brigade game rules, but otherwise it's uh, pretty much the same from the soldiers, the battalion, and the brigade game rules. First, let's go over the counters and the, and the numbers on them. So for infantry in line, which are these fellows here, they have their fire strength is in the white box in the upper left, so their fire strength is three. So we have a full skirmish mode unit, and you can tell he can go into full skirmish mode because he's got the bugle there. This one is also rifle armed because it's got the red circle underneath the bugle. And when they're in full skirmish mode, they use the value in the pink box. So his uh, skirmish fire value is three. And this unit here is in column. Their fire strength is always one. For units in column. And this unit is in square, its fire strength is also one. Uh, the difference with square is it can fire at two non-adjacent hexes, so it can fire here and here, or here and here, but not in two, at targets in, the, in two hexes. So for units with skirmishers deployed, they use the number on the skirmisher marker as their fire strength. So this guy here has three skirmisher SP deployed, so his fire value is a three to start with, and this one has a one skirmisher deployed, so <clears throat> his fire strength is one to start with. So now for artillery, artillery has a number of values on the counter, and most of those are used in the brigade game, or actually I should say half of those. Uh, so <clears throat> the upper left value in the white box is their fire strength for round shot. So in, this, in the soldiers and battalion game, only the round shot fire value is used. In the Brigade game, it adds in Howitzer Fire, which is in the blue box, and then Canister, which is in the yellow box. And then the value in the green box is their Combat Value Modifier, which is the same across all the counters. Units that are in Road Column or that are broken or in Route cannot make fire attacks. You can see that the markers have a number of values on them. The number in the upper left applies to fire attacks. <clears throat> so for this, the Skirmisher, the Road Column, and the Broken and the Route markers, the number in the upper left applies to units firing at that particular target, so they modify their fire strength by that value. And uh, <clears throat> the disorder marker has a red background, which indicates that it applies to the, the fire value of the firing unit. So most of the modifiers are on the markers, but there are a few that are on the fire strength modifiers chart, uh, including the target stacking. So if a target is uh, overstacked, then there's a modifier for it. <clears throat> there's also uh, terrain effects modifiers, which are on the TEC, um, and other various modifiers. So the, the modifiers in pink apply only to the brigade game. So to determine the fire strength of a, of a stack, we're going to add up the fire strength values and apply any modifiers for the target or the firing unit, and that'll be the finer, final fire strength that we use on the fire chart, which is uh, fire strength along the top row, and then uh, the results on the left and the die rolls required to, to get those results. And you can see <clears throat> column number one there is marked so that you can remember that that's where column and uh, square start on the fire chart. So to conduct a fire attack, we choose a firing stack and a target stack and add up the fire strength and the fire strength modifiers and then roll the dice. And so a single target, like these guys here, can be the target of more than one fire attack in, a, in the same fire phase. So this unit could fire there, this unit could fire at the same target, and this unit could fire at the same target. And all three add their fire strength separately and their fire strength modifiers separately and roll their dice separately. So it is possible that a unit that is in, uh, surrounded by multiple hexes like that, it, it can go from good order to broken in the same uh, fire phase. So there are some other limits to firing. <clears throat> For example, units can only fire through their front facing, which is what you'd expect. Stacks do not split fire, except in the case of the square, where they can fire at uh, two non-adjacent hexes. Also, there are some limits on how many units and how many strength points can fire from a hex, and we'll go over that in just a moment. Okay, let's go ahead and run through an example. <clears throat> so we've got these three units that are going to fire at the, the British unit. So we'll start on the right here. So his fire strength is five. Firing at a target in line. So there's no modifiers there. So we just uh, roll two dice. 
We roll to 54, which that's going to be a on the 5 column of the chart over here. So a 50 is uh, greater, a 54 is greater than the 50 value, <clears throat> but less than the 84. So that is a morale check minus 15. Then we roll the dice again. Well, for <clears throat> first we mark it over here on our fire track chart to help you keep track of the results. And we have a M minus 15 result with the, the one on the marker indicating how many times we got that result. So now we'll do the next fire attack which this one has a fire combat uh, strength of two, but it's minus one for being in disorder. And it's still firing at a target that's just in line formation, so there's no modifiers. It rolled a 79, so that's on the one column, because it started at two and subtract one for the disorder. 79, looks like it's gonna be an M minus 10. So we go back over to our fire result track here and mark that. <coughs> And then we resolve the last attack. So the last attack is a flank shot. So it's got the Legion Han Hanoverian, which is a fire strength of two. And on our chart over here, we see that uh, fire down through the flank is a plus two. So he's going to be on the four column. And we roll the dice again. 67 on the four column is a another M minus 15. So that's two M minus 15 results. So now, after we rolled all the fire attacks against that target, now we can resolve the morale checks. So we'd resolve the, the M minus 10, 64, he's good, and 99, can't get better than that, and a 63. So he got lucky and passed all of the morale checks. But if he, had, if he had failed one, he would end up in disorder. If he had failed two, he would end up shaken. If he had failed all three, he would end up broken and then and then uh, retreat away. <clears throat> so if there were actually more than three fire attacks, if the fourth result resulted in a morale check that, that the unit failed, it would only still get to the broken state. So as soon as it reaches the broken state, you know, it, it's done taking its morale checks and it uh, runs away. And that's done to give units the, the two chances to uh, to rally before they're removed off the map. Now let's talk a little bit about range. So units in line, column, or square have a range of one hex for infantry. Units that have skirmishers deployed have a range of two or three hexes, depending on whether or not they're rifle armed. In the soldiers game, uh, skirmishers always have a range of two hexes, regardless of whether they're rifle armed or not. <clears throat> but in the battalion and brigade games, rif rifle armed units can get that uh, extra hex, and we'll, we'll go over that when we talk a little bit more about skirmishers. Artillery, on the other hand, has uh, different ranges depending on the type of artillery battery. So if we go over here to the artillery chart, we can see that the French four-pounder has a range of one to two hexes for canister range, <clears throat> three to five hexes for effective range, and six to seven hexes for long range. And the eight-pounder has a uh, Slightly different numbers, as does the British 6-pounder and the British 9-pounder. And for the uh, soldiers game, there's no tracking of ammo, but here on the battalion game artillery chart, you can see uh, the low ammo die rolls. <clears throat> now in the brigade game, it gets a little bit more complicated, where we add in different range bands for different types of ammo, whether we're firing round shot, canister, or shell. And I did the ballistics calculations for all these based on the, the weight of shot and the length of the gun tube. And the ballistics calculations were done for elevation. So point blank is zero degrees elevation, which is how they get the name point blank. Effective is one degree elevation and long range is uh, two degrees elevation, except for howitzers where it's a little, a little higher than that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about fire limits for units that are stacked. So artillery can fire up to six strength points out of a hex. Units in line formation can fire up to five strength points. Units in full skirmish mode, the skirmishers on Debandad, can fire up to four strength points. Uh, <clears throat> unit For units in column and square, it's only the top unit that can fire, and it's always one strength point. That, well, always a fire strength of one starting on the fire chart. So in this case, uh, we've got uh, three artillery units stacked and two units in line formation stacked. So the artillery, the top two, units have a have a fire have a have six strength points total. 
So the bottom unit could not contribute to the same fire attack with those units. It would not be allowed to fire. And on the left there with the units in line, the top unit has a has a four strength points and the bottom unit has two strength points. So if you add the two up, then it would exceed the five allowed, so the bottom unit can not contribute its fire strength to the fire attack. So the fire strength for the units in line would then be just two. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about skirmishers. So skirmishers have a skirmish zone that they project either from the hex of the parent unit when they have the skirmishers markers deployed or from the hex of the combat unit that is uh, in full skirmish mode, which is the skirmishers on Day Bone Dead. So the, the green zone is the limit of the skirmishing for all types in the soldiers game. Otherwise, the green zone is the limit for units that are armed with smoothbore muskets. And units armed with smoothbore muskets have a, a bugle on the counter to, uh, to show that they can be in full skirmish mode. Or and only only units with the bugle on the counter and with a red circle are rifle armed. All the rest are smoothbore musket armed. So they can fire into the green hexes. The units with the <coughs> rifled muskets can fire out into the pink hexes. And so <coughs> the skirmish zone extends through those hexes, but it does not extend through friendly unit unit occupied hexes or enemy occupied hexes. So <coughs> the 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 concept is is that you've got the skirmish screen kind of out in front of the unit and firing into the hexes adjacent to that. If there's other units there, then clearly they cannot uh, be in those hexes. And then the rifle-armed unit, rifle units require a line of sight <coughs> from the front hexes, so that's from these two hexes to any of the pink hexes. Otherwise, no line of sight is required to fire in, in the green zone. So any and when in column formation, then any, any of those hexes, no line of sight is required. Line of sight is required from here to here, or here to here, or here to here, or any of these out to the, any of these three hexes out to these pink hexes. The units are mostly limited to moving to their front, but one uh, aspect of artillery is that uh, before they fire, every time before they fire, they can rotate up to 30 degrees. So if they're say, have an artillery piece stacked here and an enemy threat is coming up on their flank there, they can rotate 30 degrees before they make a fire attack, bringing that guy within his arc. And then uh, if they fire again, they could rotate back and they could, uh, <laughs> the only time they'd get to do that is they could, they get to fire in their fire segment, they get to fire in the non-phasing artillery segment, but they could also fire potentially as a reaction to other units approaching. So let's touch on artillery ammunition a little bit. So in the soldiers game, there is no artillery ammunition tracking. In the battalion game, we use a simple die roll system. So if a battery rolls a low die roll, so in this case, they're mostly zero through zero eight, or in the British nine pounder case, zero through 12. If you roll that, then the battery goes low ammo and they get a low ammo marker. Then on a subsequent die roll for a fire attack, if you get a die roll from zero to 49, then the battery gum becomes out of ammo. And to resupply, you limber up and get on a rotor trail and roll some dice to, to resupply. So in the brigade game, it's done a little bit differently. We track uh, artillery ammo by ammo type. <laughs> so you can see over here, there's a, a chart that you can mark off ammo. So we have round shot, canister, and shell. And there would be potentially additional types, uh, such as shrapnel for the, for the British. And when uh, they run out of round shot or shell, but not canister, they can dispatch an empty caisson from the, uh, the artillery battery, and it'll begin marching back until it gets to the point where it stacks with a train. And generally, you want to want to keep the trains far back from the fighting because they're quite vulnerable. And after it stacks with the train, then in the next resupply phase, it will flip back over to full and it can move back to the parent unit. And when it gets back to the parent unit, it'll resupply its ammunition for, for all types. And then uh, the caisson is removed. It's, the caisson heads back to the rear, so the caisson doesn't stay on the map. It's, it's only on during the resupply process.
So the brigade game also adds a howitzer fire. Uh, you can set towns on fire with howitzer fire. It also adds rolling shot, which is where they bounce the, the shot along the ground at a, at a low trajectory to try and uh, have it bounce through multiple formations and as a way to extend the range. There's also grand battery bombardment zones where all units that are in or move through that zone are subject to a fire attack. So let's kind of go through a, a howitzer fire example. <laughs> so for a howitzer fire, you take a look at the, uh, the howitzer chart here and you can see that a hit or a miss is uh, basically a 50-50 shot. So you pick a target hex within the uh, effective or long range bands of the of the uh, howitzer piece, which is in the, the blue and the, and the colors on the chart here match the colors in the, the boxes on the counter as kind of a, a reminder of the type of artillery piece and the type of, of shot being fired. So you can see here, it's it's got round in its, or orange in its background and then uh, round shot is white, shell is blue, and canister is yellow, just like on the, on the charts here <coughs> for the artillery piece and the rounds being fired. Send back to the, uh, the howitzer scatter diagram and the howitzers. So when you, you pick a target hex, you roll two dice to see if you hit. If it's at long range, there's minus 20. If you don't have an LOS to the target, it's another minus 20. So you're, you're just hoping to hit something, and, and that's typically used to fire into maybe reserve formations that are behind something that you you can't really see very well, or to fire into a town and they're they're just lobbing shells to try and uh, cause some some mayhem. So to figure out the scatter, we take a look at the our setup here. We put their howitzer scatter marker there, marker there, and we orient the arrow back towards the firing unit in the pattern that most closely matches. So if you're firing from a hex side, you'd you'd use that. If you're firing from a hex point, you'd use that. And you roll two dice to see if you hit or miss. If you miss, then you go to the scatter diagram and roll two more dice and see where it, where the shot actually lands and then conduct the uh, the fire attack there in, in whatever hex it lands in, even if it's a friendly hex. That's all for fire combat. I hope you enjoyed this video.